Labels out, branding, 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 uh, branding, 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 branding. Uh, <laughs> fucking guy does. <laughs> oh. Branding, branding, branding. <laughs> what are you branding, talking branding. about? That guy sketch. I don't even the pay attention to that guy. The guy fucking took over the world, bro. I don't pay Been attention to him. Been relevant for like two months. He takes over the... Are anyway. you talking about TikTok? No, this guy sketch. Whatever. <laughs> he's he's a streamer who's a streamer who like might have a little something wrong with him, but I think he's playing a character. But bro, honestly, just bro, look up just look up sketch with doing the you know the fucking like Tuesday Tuesday. What's up, brother? <laughs> fucking oh Greg. Oh my got god. Me anyway. Oh my god. I'm crying. Anyway, dude. hello. Definitely been a minute. This is the Challenge Dimes podcast, and we're not gonna waste any more of your times doing uh, whatever the fuck that was. God damn it! I can't curse, mother. <laughs> It's all right. I'll so bleep it So we're going to edit that out. <laughs> uh, <laughs> this has been the Chow and Dives podcast. Thank you for tuning in. And uh, we're going to talk about some stuff. Uh, we got some big, big sporting news. And um, we're going to start right off with UFC. Yeah, we that have was to one start. Of, that was one of the best cards I've ever watched. And it was the Super Bowl of UFC. It was. It was. And um, so, yeah, I going into it, actually, I want to bring up some of our bets, too. Because this was probably, I always, if, when I do bet any sports, and I rarely do, it's usually UFC, because UFC is, it's one of those sports where you genuinely can, like, kind of tell when someone might win. I, I'm not saying that it's, like, easy to bet on UFC. I think it's easier than other sports, because it's not a team-oriented sport. That's just my opinion. Um, but I, uh... I didn't do so well in the bets anyway, but, but I just had to say that. I think I, would, I like betting on UFC. That's would, that's all I, I want to say. I would seven, and if Charles... <sighs> I'm so butthurt over Charles. Yeah. Bro. Yeah, well, like, so let's... I um, love Charles. Let's, let's, go over, let's go over, like, most some of the main card. So I we we got to bring up Bo Nickel. I think Bo Nickel is a stud who's going to get harder fights in the future, but the fact that he was on the main card for UFC 300... That's Dana White privilege. That that's pure oh, yeah. Dana White privilege, and I don't understand why he's on the main card. The um, Prohashka and Radit Radit. That should have been. That should have. They should have. That fight was incredible. It was literally the fight right before the Bo Nickel. Yeah. Like, bro, I think I went to the bathroom during the card or during that fight, and it was over by the time I got out. Yeah, it, it was so dumb. And then some other the pr- other prelims. The Aljo and Cater fight. I mean, that was yeah, that was a sleeper. Um, Aljo won just because he's just better at just taking people down and holding them there. I guess. Yeah, he put a baby in his opponent. Yeah, and then the Figueredo Garbrandt fight was pretty good. That was pretty good. Oh, I, yeah. Cody yeah, went swinging early, and yeah, then Figueredo, Figueredo figured brought him to the out. Ground, it was over. Yeah, pretty much. Um, Bro, can I talk? Actually, wait. Let's finish this little, this yeah, little whatever. Um, Oliveira and Sarukian hurt me. Hurt me. So Oliveira much. didn't look good at all. He did. I, he did. But the problem, I just, I don't think I want he him did. To bro. Stand up. I'm tired of him laying on his back. I like. I think he's my favorite fighter. Like, yeah. I genuinely yeah, like his story. Yep. I like the way he fights. And yeah, I might sit there and complain about the fact that he just sits there with his legs up waiting for someone to. And that illegal kick wasn't to the head. It was more to, like, the upper chest area, but whatever. Yeah. Sarukian's not a little a little pansy who's going to be like, it's an illegal head. No, he's not. Did you? By the way, did you see what he did during the walkout? I missed it. He Sarukian, punched a yeah, fan. Yeah, he punched a fan. I didn't even see that happen when yeah, we were watching. The guy, the guy, if you see the clip, the guy literally, like, walks up and, like, I think he, like, smacked him either on, like, the shoulder or the I back thought, of the see, head. I saw another clip of a dude just flipping off Sarukian. Like, this was on Twitter, I saw. So, a guy, so Sarukian's walking out, and the guy's, like, literally filming, and he's, like, sticking his middle finger out. And I don't, I thought that was the guy, but I guess it wasn't. I could be wrong. I mean, the angle I, I saw was, like, you know, if it happened right here, it was, like, three, st- it was, like, a story up, and it could have been that. that I don't but really that's know. that's hilarious, though. That I heard about him getting punched, because I heard Dana White after the prelims be yeah. like, hey, I'm probably going to get sued. Yeah. Deal with it on Monday. Yeah, I saw that, too. And I, I thought that's how you make a fighter. Just get ready. Like, you just f- make him mad in the walkout. Yeah, yeah. Piss, piss him off and <laughs> like, then have him where he's, like, yeah, walking okay. out after winning and just be like, see what you did to your boy? Yeah, literally. And just knock his ass out. Yeah. 
Um, also, you're going to do that to guys that are literally paid to beat the shit out of people? Are you kidding me? And I'm glad that he's allowed to punch him. Like, generally. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, yeah. I'm this glad is he any is. Other, if this is any other whatever in the league ever. They're yeah. going to be like, it's the player's You're, fault. Blah, blah, blah. I know. No, it's the fan sticking his middle But the finger. players are going to cry anyway, in any other. Yeah. Anyway, I'm still so mad that Charles lost. Yeah. If Charles would have won, I would have won, you know, a $200 parlay. But Well, he'll get, I mean, we'll see what his matchups are coming up. But he, like I was saying, he needs to get a fighter that's a good matchup for him. No wrestlers. Because he doesn't, he's good on the ground. He, don't get me wrong. He's good on the ground. He's good jujitsu. But he's better standing up. If that's a five round fight, I think Charles wins. Yeah, it's a good point. They should have made it five round fight. There's I a mean, lot of fights on that card that could have been worthy for a five round fight. They should have did that. The Gaethje Holloway fight. That's that's a main event that, in every other card yes. ever. So let's get right into that one. So going in, I thought Gaethje was going to win. Right until I saw Max Holloway walk out. Yes. The point to the ground. Bro, that that's his logo now. That's that his, is logo a logo now. Right. his logo now. His logo. <laughs> it's just literally just a hand pointing straight down, and I'm like, dude, that this guy's a this guy's a this guy's a bad motherfucker. Yeah, like, he deserves that belt. Yeah, and he oh. I so he's gonna fight um, what's his name? You fucking better fight Ilya. Ilya, I think Max. That's probably a good fight. I don't know who can win that. Il, um, Max. Max wins. You think Max wins? Max wins? I don't know. I'm not gonna say anything yet, but. I think that's a good fight. I would love to see Max stay in lightweight, though, eventually. Oh, that division's stacked. It's though. so stacked. I think that's a reason also why he got all that publicity after this fight is because he fought Gaethje, who's in a stacked card, who's fought everybody. That card is, I mean, not excuse me, not stacked card, stacked division. Um, if you get in that division and you do well, you're going to be one of the top stars in the UFC, like, already. So I just hope Max goes back up. Um, and fights in that division. Justin Gaethje, he could fight anyone he wants. I think I'm, he deserves that like I, priority. I'm so tired of all the disrespect I'm hearing yeah, about Gaethje. People I know, are like, especially Gaethje after this fight. Blah, blah, nah, blah. I'm like, bro, he that dude fought fights Max his ass Holloway. Off. Yeah. He didn't die. He didn't die. He didn't fight, you know, <laughs> Bo Nickel, who's 4-5-0 or five and oh, and yeah. lose to him in the first round. No. Did he have a spectac- Did he get spectacularly knocked out? Yeah, of course. But he didn't get knocked out by Bo Nickel. He got Mac- knocked out by Max Holloway. The guy has, like, what, 10 years of experience? Yeah, and they, and you know, he they put goes, it down on oh, the end. Oh, it's 10 seconds left? Stand yeah, exactly. right here. Let's go. Let's scrap real quick. And Gaethje was done at that, that point, that and he still went in. Insane. Yeah. Literally yeah. just, I still see the angle. You see, like, seven different angles the next day and everything, and it's just like, dude. Yeah, I've been watching UFC for a while. I think that was one of the most hyped moments I've had as a viewer. Watching UFC, so hey man, I'm uh, worth it. <laughs> I'm not gonna lie, I've been into UFC for like just about a year, I want to say, or maybe a little over a year. I think I got into how do you March. how do you get into UFC? Like, what was your start? Um, was it a certain fighter? Was it a certain event? No, to be very honest with you, I got ESPN Plus like a oh, a little over a year ago from like whatever deal it was. I think I got like the package of like Disney Plus, Hulu, yeah, ESPN Plus. So. I remember talking to like somebody I worked with, and I was like, "Yo, like, no, it wasn't. It was a uh, an old roommate of an old college roommate." And I was like, "Yo, bro, like, if I was gonna start watching UFC, which fight card should I watch?" He yeah. goes, "Oh, watch this one." I still remember the first fight I ever watched. It was uh, Frankie Edgar against some Brazilian guy. But I remember like hearing, I'm like, "Wow, Frankie Edgar!" And I went, "Holy shit, Frankie Edgar's got a, got a UFC yeah. gym right up on 23." Yep. I'm like, "Wow, like." You know, he's from New Jersey. His family's there. He's a veteran. Blah, blah, blah. He got knocked out in two minutes. Yeah. Like, I mean, horrifically. Yeah, I remember that fight now. Flying knee broke his face, and he just folded like a lawn chair. But after that, I was like, I need to know everything about the sport. And, you know, my favorite is I went to go pick up some uh, medicinal herbs. If you pick up what I'm putting (laughs) down. (laughs) Yeah. It's coming up. Um (laughs) <laughs> and I'm talking to their guy, and I'm of course I had to go the day after UFC 300, and I'm hungover. Guy talks to me about UFC, and I'm like, you know, I'm not, I'm not really giving him too much like attention because I'm like, listen, man, I'm really hungover. Like, I can't, <laughs> I can't give you the the reaction you want. Yeah. And I was like, yeah, I've been in the UFC for like a year. Guy looks at me and goes, oh, so you're a casual? I went, oh no. 
you're one of those elitists that are like that are gonna look at me and be like, who was the champion the casual, before Conor just McGregor? Just for watching it, yeah, that's yeah. so dumb. Who was the champion before Conor McGregor? And how many times did he defend the belt? Good, good for you, man. I'm, I'm happy you've liked a sport for ten years. You, you know, see me being an elitist about football? No, I don't. You know, I that's so this dumb because technically everyone who follows a sport is a casual because. I would say less than 1% of people who watch the sport actually have done anything MMA-wise in their lives. You know what I mean? I, that I, that I themselves feel. makes you a casual. And because so how much do you actually know about the sport in general? Like, the ins and outs of, like, what these guys are actually doing. And it's also, like, That's, like, bro, crazy. It's, like, bro, God forbid you want more eyes on your sport. Doesn't that yeah. good for business? Yeah, Why true. are you sitting here saying to me, oh, you're a casual? Fuck you. Yeah, I know. That's stupid. Get out of here. But They're like, oh, you're a casual if you can't name these things. Lick the back up. No, I mean, not get personal here. But, <laughs> like, dude, I just I can't understand that way of thinking. Yeah, you know? I don't get that Like, either. if somebody comes up to me and goes, like, oh, like, what do you think about this fight? I'm going to give them my honest opinion. But, yeah. you know, if you're going to sit there and be like, oh, that's a very casual opinion to have. I'm going to be like, I don't want to ever talk to you about UFC. Yeah. Like again. But, yeah, I mean, I've been following UFC since freshman year of high school. So pretty much, I went from WWE watching a lot of right to, right to MMA and getting into that. So, I um, John Jones was my favorite fighter for so long. Uh, I, yeah, pretty much got into him just because he was like the face of the company that during that time. Um, so twenty, what what year was that? Twenty twelve, I guess freshman year of high school. Sounds about right. Yeah, I think it was twenty twelve. So I remember I bought a John Jones shirt. Haven't touched that shit in years because <laughs> he ain't he does not deserve the I'm not wearing that I'm not a big John Jones fan anymore, needless to say because uh, yeah he's he also a, he's kind of, of a biggest, douche. He but. also has one of my biggest pet peeves about like the UFC. Yeah, like I've said, I think I said this too. Like my two biggest hot takes when it comes to UFC is I have two. First one, and both of them I want them to be rules. Yeah. First one is if you're a champion. And you don't defend the belt in, let's say, within 10 months. Yeah. You should be stripped of the belt. There's no way. Now, I get it. John Jones got hurt and blah, 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 blah. But he's holding up an entire division. Yeah. Waiting for him to get healthy. And the guy is so hell-bent on fighting Stipe Miocic. And I'm like, dude, why do you still have the belt? Yeah, I don't get it either. And then the second, well, the second one is just because I'm tired of you know champions calling other champions out. Like the 125 wants to fight the 140, the 135 for their it's belt. The 135 uh, wants to fight of money. the 145. They're doing it because of money. They want to get I'm that like, big payday. I'm like, dude, listen. You should have a set number of defenses before you can even think about challenging. I think Dana that. White's going to end up doing yeah. that eventually Cause like, because it's know, getting ridiculous. I like, love sure. Sean O'Malley to death, and that last fight he had against Cheeto Vera was an absolute master class by him. Yeah. But one title defense and you're calling out Ilya Toporier? Come on, man. Yeah. Give other guys. Give it to Murad Vadashvili. Definitely butchered that name. <laughs> But yeah, give I know it to what you're him, about. bro. Stay yeah. within your division until all the contenders are, you know, gravestones, and then you can move up. Do what Volk did. Volk was literally, or Volkanovski, yeah, he was literally begging contenders to fight him for the belt. Nobody wanted to. He went, fuck it, let's go up at weight class and fought Israel. That makes sense, then. Yeah. But, well, whatever. speaking of guys who might go up, so Alex Pereira absolutely just destroys everybody. I mean, Adesanya was the only guy that really put up a fight against him, and he knocked him out, which is even more impressive. Um, but yeah, I mean, who's who's next for Alex Pereira? He's pretty much going through everybody, and he hinted at heavyweight. Not saying he's going to do it near future, but I think eventually he will go up to heavyweight because his body's just huge. He just puts up up. He can. I think he when normal weight wise, he's sitting around two thirty ish, two thirty five. So. He could easily fight at heavyweight. But once you go up to heavyweight, you don't go back down. That's yeah. a thing. So that's more of like end of career type of deal. Um, I mean, the guy's also 36. He is 36. Uh, I'm pretty sure. speed running the UFC. Yeah. But he's going to go down as one of the legends of the sport. Oh, yeah. Even before he went guy. into the UFC, he was a legend. Dude, this guy, I don't understand how he made 185. Just hard work, you dedication. See that, you see that? You see that post that was going around of like him making the weight, obviously for weighing. Yeah, and he then was... the next day he put on twenty seven pounds. Yeah, he was it's walking all water weight. Two thirty. I went. Yeah, it's all water weight. 
So it's, a, it's impressive. These guys are different breeds. Did you see like the, I call them the little like plastic bag like shirts where <laughs> they like zip them up and they're like yeah yeah doing their little like one two buckle my shoe and then your I'm body's like, I'm like dude I can only I imagine would, I would be so uncomfortable yeah I can only imagine how uncomfortable that like, is like for me I'm weighing I'm weighing about one one eighty something ish or whatever but. I could not imagine if somebody were to go, you need to fight in the, in the yeah, I wouldn't division. division. I'm like, are you telling me I'm going to go up against fucking Sean Strickland and, Iz- and Izzy? Well, do you think there should be certain guidelines where guys oh, no, can't just cut saying, a certain like, amount of weight? No, it's like for me, like I'm oh, just saying, just like, you, yeah, I'm just saying it. it blows my mind that these guys fight in a division that I weigh. Yeah. Like I weigh. And like I'm. Not, you know, I'm not a physical specimen. I'm also not the one percent of one percenters that are in the UFC, but blows my mind sometimes. Yeah, I I think they'll maybe one day start to restrict the amount of weight you can cut to stay in a division, um, because it is kind of crazy. I think Charles Oliveira, I mean not Charles Oliveira, uh, Pereira, Alex Pereira, um, he's the epitome of that. Like he's really shown that you can get away with cutting a lot. Conor McGregor too. He was one guy as well. Uh, he walked around at like 170 and he was fighting at 145. So that's another example of a guy. But but let's not get get it wrong here that Alex is he's a better fighter than Connor. Like overall, yeah, he's way better. Connor was a great fighter who fought guys who were way smaller than him and also um just who were near their end of their primes. So like Jose liking, Aldo. I stopped liking McGregor after the Floyd fight. When he and lost, got bag. he lost, yeah. hugged him and went, fuck it, we rich. Yeah. I went. He's right, though. But that's just what boxing right, is. Then, since then, he's like, what, one in three or one in two against? Yeah. Lost to Khabib, lost to Poirier twice. Yep. I mean, the second time he broke his fucking leg. And he beat leg, Cerrone. But, yeah. Who was, Ooh, Donald yeah. Cerrone. Who he dominated because he wasn't. Cerrone even I got said. Chandler, I got Chandler in that fight. Okay. I, I don't care what I anybody like says. All you, I, all you Irish guys can come at me. I'm a little Irish myself, and I ain't got Chandler. I got Chandler too. Connor's been away from the sport for too long. He's also roided out of his mind. So he I'm was. Gonna, he's gonna. He you know. He was inflated. Now he's gonna deflate. Yeah. I mean, that was a brutal injury, though. It was, but like, you're gonna use roids. You know, that's the reason why they left Usada. I get it. I just think if you want to actually fight again, you need some help because a bone. Injury like you break your leg, yeah, you're it's, taking it's, stuff to like, fix your leg, dude. But it's a like I'd feel a little bit different if it was like a ligament damage, like an ACL, an MCL, an Achilles, whatever. But it's a bone. Bones heal in like it's not about four the bone eight though. Weeks? Yeah, I get it, but it's about your whole leg because you can't use that leg for like months and months and months for the bone to heal. So your whole leg just deteriorates. That's why he took all those PEDs. It's so I he still, can get I back still... to regular – because your body – like, listen, when I got hurt, my leg is still not the same size as my other leg because just – that's just how your muscles work. You, you lose that muscle mass, and then you end up getting to a point where you can't build necessarily as much muscle as you used to, as you used to but that muscle that you have can get, still get as strong as it was. I think Connor wanted to get the muscle that he had, but the problem is – you just need a little help with that. He had enough time to fucking film a movie, but not enough time. And he also had enough time to take PEDs. Because guess what? The last time he fought was dude, two years ago. Dude, have you seen? Have you seen like the pictures of him when he was like, dude? Guy had guy's face was about as pink as like. Yeah, I don't even know it what was. to compare it to. It was, but he was. I mean, everything. Like for me, what made what I like the most about Connor was the fact that. Talk shit, and I don't, I'm not big on the whole like you know you could sit there and be like oh well he's an Irish fighter no I like that he talks shit yeah you know my favorite Conor McGregor moment besides the you know I like to take this chance to apologize which everyone fucking loves yeah I love when he's sitting in the press conference and he's like out of everyone on stage who do you think is the whatever and some guy goes I'm the hardest hitter oh yeah yeah he goes who the fuck is that guy yeah that was I'm like 
I think like, everyone I laughed. Like. But now you watch him speak. Just watch a normal interview with Connor. He doesn't speak the same. He doesn't articulate sentences like he used to. And he's like, hey, you know, and he's like, do you remember? Did you ever watch The Simpsons as a kid? Yeah. Did you remember the little gag they used to do with like a little leprechaun when he'd be like, yeah, yeah. That's what Connor McGregor sounds like sometimes. You get him wound up, and he's just like, I mean, the dude's been around for so long. You can't expect someone to be exactly the same for 10 plus years. Also, I'm after Khabib, he fell off. Like, just, it's, a re- it's the truth. I'm tired of hearing about the Conor McGregor. We'll see I what happens. Like, I don't like McGregor. I'm putting, I'm putting probably a calm, like, 50 bucks on um, Chandler. I think Chandler's going to be heavy favorite, though. Like, by, like my favorite. right now, he's a favorite? Are you kidding me? The lines are already out. When they announce the fight, the lines go out. That line's going to move. It's like Meg, uh, McGregor's a 104 favorite, and then Chandler's plus 100. So. Mm, I mean, we'll talk more about that well, fight you, when it comes you know, around. You know as it gets closer, though, that that favorite line's going to go up. Because we'll everyone's going to be like, McGregor's coming back? I remember what he did to Jose Aldo over 10 years ago. Or 10 years ago. Maybe not 10 years ago. I don't know, man. I uh, just, I don't know if he's going to be favorite the whole time. I, I'm telling you, I think that line's going to switch. Once people start realizing, but but then again, we'll see. We'll see. We'll talk more about that when it comes. Um, so yeah, let's uh let's get into a little bit about the NBA because we haven't talked about the NBA at all really ever on this podcast. How are we gonna skip over the? Fa- Hold on, before one more thing about the UFC. Yeah, go ahead. How are we gonna sit here and skip over the fact that Alex Pereira dead ass got hit in the dick <laughs> and then proceeded to you knock the guy out? Literally said, "Hold on, Herb." Let me let me get this real quick, and then flatline Jamal Hill. True. I said to you, I'm tired. Like remember, remember where I don't know if you were sitting here watching the pregame show or whatever, but I was like, we were talking about it, and all these experts were like, up yeah. oh, Jamal Hill, up oh, Jamal Hill, Jamal Hill. I literally went, okay, Pereira wins, threw twenty dollars at Pereira right then and there, because Jamal Hill, experts. man, just like ah. Uh. If if that one nut shot. kick never happened, that knockout wouldn't have happened though. That's I what I'm know. thinking. It's hard to it's hard to talk. At it's least hard. not at that moment. But yeah. I mean, I can also say that if Charles would have fucking stood up and you know fought on the feet a little bit more, then he probably would have fucking won. But here I am sitting here as a Charles Oliveira fan, thinking to myself, "Wow, my favorite fighter lost." Yeah. Hey, he'll fight again. But hey, we're rooting for Poirier against uh, Makachev. Oh, for sure. For we're, sure, we're fighting. Where we want, we want the diamond over the guy that's living in someone else's legacy. I don't think anyone's gonna root for Islam Better. in that fight. No, no one is. Yeah, the, Trust guy, me. the guy's building a career off of Khabib's legacy and also that's Poirier's last chance. And that's that's why I want him to just. I want him to get it finally. I think every UFC fan wants him to be like the official champion because mm-hmm. you know Dustin will be like, all right. Who's next? Yeah, he doesn't. He does not like. Yeah, he's not gonna be like. Oh, he doesn't wanna, back uh, down at any fight. So. Oh, I don't want to fight one fifty fivers. I want to fight one forty fivers. I want to fight Volk twice. Yeah, I don't know, but Whatever. we'll see. We'll see. Um. So yeah, let's get in the NBA. Um. Let's talk. Talk me about your Warriors, dude. <sighs> Are they done? Are they done? Like for good? Because there's nobody on that team. For future reference, like for um, future stars' sake, there's no one besides the big three that they have now. Like, there's no one on that team that's a young and up and coming. Like, man, I feel bad because every dynasty does come to an end, but you wanted to see that team go for one more run, no. and it's just not happening. That 2022 run was their last run. Yeah, it's a but shame. Their their windows closed. Yeah, I mean, you would need you would need something dramatic to happen like it just it sucks because you know everyone's saying like oh clay is washed clay went oh of 10 from the field and i'm like do we not realize that this guy is in his mid-30s he's coming off well not coming off but had two of the worst basketball injuries to happen back to back of each other and you gotta realize it's 2024 it is not 2018 anymore yeah the window's closed. It sucks, yeah. But, you know, yeah. It depends on what they want to do. Because I genuinely don't think that the Warriors' management will offer Clay a... You know what's crazy? 
What? Steve Kerr wants to keep Clay. You can tell because if you look at the Clay's numbers from uh, March to April, his I mean, usage is up, yeah. his shot percentage is up, his points are up. They're getting him involved with the offense to the point where if you watched in April, or if you watched in, yeah, April, or April and like towards the end of March, if you watch that, they touching the ball every single time. He always had Clay running through the offense. They want Clay back. He just wants a contract, though, right? Management will give him that contract. Yeah. And That's I a can't shame. see Clay. I, I mean, I don't think Clay retires. Well, you know Draymond is going to move too, then. No, Draymond. Draymond signed. He's, oh, he signed with. Oh, I didn't know that. Remember oh, they chose good. him over over Jordan Poole and look how that oh, worked yeah. out. Oh yeah, yeah. That fucking punch really saved my franchise a couple of years. <laughs> but and then uh, Curry. I, I mean, Curry's still going to be honestly, good though bro, for the rest of his career. Honestly, bro, I think we made. A, I think depending on what happens with the Clippers, mm-hmm. I think we make a play for Paul George. <sighs> I, like I don't know that. who the hell we would trade for him, but like maybe we get Kaminga. Kaminga is gonna be a good piece, but you got to give him like another year or two. Same thing with Moses Moody. Moses Moody and Kaminga need about another year or two. Moses Moody probably needs another year, while Kaminga needs another two years. Um, the the guy whose name I can never pronounce, Paz, the first round rookie we got, keep him. Maybe you trade Moody and Kaminga, trying yeah. to get Paul George. Maybe throw in like a first round pick. I never um, thought about them still trying to get a big big name star like that. That makes sense. Get the f- get Chris Paul the fuck out of Golden State. I am tired of him. He's just like washed. Roman now. He's Roman. He is to washed. Different teams every year. Guy yeah. cannot. Guy cannot stay healthy. It's always something. Whenever whenever he gets eliminated from the playoffs, he is never his fault. Bro, those Lob City teams that he was a part of, everyone got hurt. Okay, benefit of the doubt. Rockets, you pull a hamstring. Nope, need the benefit of the doubt again. You lose in the NBA Finals after being up 2-0 or whatever the fuck it was. Uh, I had an apparent knee injury. Get the fuck out of here. You are not going to sit here and tell me that every single playoff loss that you've had is not your fault. Mm. Get this guy the fuck up out of here. We're not paying his contract for him to sit on the sideline and pick fights with fans. I don't give a... F- it sucks though Get because Chris Paul out of Golden State, Steve. He, dude, he's not staying after this year though. Like it's obvious, but it's it's send funny because Paul George. We'll send Chris Paul, Kaminga, and one other guy, and maybe a, maybe like a draft pick, and we'll get like we'll get Paul George. But it's funny because the Kings now have their num the Warriors number now. No, they don't. Yeah, they do. No, they don't. They kind of do. No, they don't. Well, how not though? They beat them last year in the playoffs. No, we beat them last year. Oh, it was the other way around. Okay, so then what am I thinking then? 50 burglar from Steph, but... Oh, I'm thinking, what am I thinking then? I don't know. This year. Yeah, I guess I'm thinking this year. I'm thinking of series last year, because that was a good series. I actually watched that one. Oh, yeah, me too. I remember driving home from... I forgot they won that. I don't know why. I mean, I remember, like, driving Uh, home and... Bro, can we... Can we... Like, I want to humble... I want to humble a fan base... Like let me let me humble a fan base right. right now. All right. <coughs> the Lakers are going to lose in the first round <laughs> to the Nuggets again, right? Again, yeah. I'm tired of hearing all that. You know what I saw today? I saw one of these LeBron sexuals send a post that was like, "Who should have won MVP, and who did win MVP?" Oh boy! Apparently, LeBron should have won the MVP for like fucking eight years straight. Yeah, right. They were like, "Oh, 2010, LeBron won it. 2011 was D Rose. Up, oh, LeBron should have won it. 2012, Bron. 13, Bron. 14, Bron. 15, Bron. 16, Steph. 17, Russell. 18, Bron. I'm like, guy. I don't know. You could make the case yeah. for all of the top. Three to five players to win MVP every single year. Also, you're going to sit here and tell me that LeBron deserved it over D. Rose. This guy very obviously was not a basketball fan. Oh, yeah. Or D. Was Rose was in diapers one of the best when seasons. D. Rose had that season. Yeah, one of the you best You got to understand, D. Rose was averaging 28 points when the league – when the league average of points was 101. Yeah. Put it into perspective, the league's average right now is 114. Yeah. It's all scoring. I so, know. I, that's why I hate it. They're like, oh, this is this is the guy that you say is whatever. I'm like, y'all need to stop watching highlights and go watch some of the games. Because 
That season, D. Rose beat LeBron, Wade, and Bosh three times. Yeah. And twice in Miami. Yeah. It was the Christmas Day game that year. Do your research. <laughs> Don't just blindly love LeBron because the only thing I, I got to do is look at you and say, so LeBron's your GOAT, right? What's his record in the finals? Oh, okay. How many rings does Steph Curry have? Oh, okay, okay. Um, Le- so tell me. Yeah. LeBron's your GOAT, right? See. So uh, who ate on LeBron's plate? Because nobody ate on Jordan's plate. All right, so now that, I, now that I'm done, you know, humbling you Laker, Laker fans, a.k.a. LeBron sexuals, I guess, I don't know. Well, let's go to, um, so yeah, I wanted to talk about the Knicks. Um, I like the Knicks this year. I've not been watching a lot of basketball, but uh, I think the Knicks have a good chance to do something this year. I don't know, though. We'll see. I just. I think you guys offensively rely way too much on Jalen Brunson, yeah. which when the playoffs start, when it slows down, I think that's a. I mean, if you guys had Julius Randle, I would be like, you guys are a very much because y'all match up very well against the Celtics. Because I always, I always look at the mat. You got to look at the matchups, especially when it comes to the playoffs. Is that yeah. who's going to attack where? Where's the weak spot here? And then blah 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 blah. Like, you guys match pretty well up against the Celtics. You know, you got couple of wings that are pretty good yeah and og ananobi is a great he's, really he's good. very much worth the assets you gave up for him yeah rj barrett i didn't like i thought he was just too he did the I same call, thing over and over i always called him lefty layup because you know yeah, he was going for that lefty layup he yeah he goes lefty layup and takes threes not very good on defense um i'm seeing here he, he averaged 18 good, he was a pretty good defender he was all right. He wasn't, you know, above average, but he was, you know, he, he was all right. in front of him. He was all right. I just, to, what was he drafted at? Four? I don't remember. Three? I don't remember. But I'm, he was like a high draft pick, and what he was, or the type of player he is now, for what where he was drafted, he's just not it. Like, he's just not good enough. So getting all those role players was worth it. I agree. I think it was a good trade. Um, but yeah, Julius Randle, I'm just, I'm not a fan of, I just never really liked him, especially after last year's playoffs. I thought he was a big baby about a lot of things. Just not a good teammate, but he's a good player. Um, I think if you guys, I think if you guys have him, your finals, yeah, finals that's, team, yeah, caliber team, finals yeah, caliber team, but you know, you don't, you know, you got to go through the Celtics, the Bucks, Doc Rivers is their coach. They're going to blow a 2-1 lead eventually. Yeah. Um, Sixers. I think the Sixers are actually the, probably the scariest team to play at the moment, but that's just my opinion. Yeah, even though Sixers Adam's are... That, they're probably going to lose to Miami right now, even though... What do you have this Miami's course? up by two. Oh, nice. Now they're up by one. So there's two minutes left. In the um, fourth? Yeah. Oh, great. So that's a good game. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm going to fall and be a... Now, since playoffs are starting, I usually don't follow the regular season anymore just because I just – I can't be asked, bro. Like, you kind of – If kinda, it's a good game, then yeah. If it's a good game, yeah, but I don't know. I just think uh, there's a lot of – there's a big gap from the teams that are making the playoffs to the teams that aren't making the playoffs in the NBA. It's a big gap, mm-hmm. and um, it's just not fun to watch. I mean, I'm looking at the standings right now. Detroit Pistons, Washington Wizards, Hornets, Raptors – even dog the Nets. Shit. Dog shit. The Hawks were 36 and 46 and are in the play-in. Huh? Like, come on, dude. Like, that's just... You don't deserve to be in the playoffs from that. At least the Golden State Warriors were 46 and 36. Like, at least you can make that argument that they were actually a mid-average team. The West is way better anyway. That being said, they still have really bad teams. You know, Portland, Tra- Tra- Portland Trailblazers, 21 and 61. Spurs 22 and 60, who I thought they were going to be way worse, which are actually the fact that they're not last is surprising. Grizzlies are 27 55. What happened to the Grizzlies? They were pretty Their good a few years ago. Is hurt. Oh, okay. Like, bro, if you sense. look at the li- if you looked at the r- the Grizz the Grizzlies like injury report at any point in the last couple of months, they literally had like 12 guys just out 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 yeah. out 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 out. It was like they had an entire team. They had an entire team full of who's? Yeah, literally. Um. But yeah, that's why I don't watch the NBA. Simple as that. I think there's just the big too much of a gap. I miss football so much. I know you haven't been watching hockey, but I've been I've been loving hockey. I know the Devils didn't make the playoffs, but um, 
they they had a bad year. To be fair, like it was just bad. I'm not gonna lie. I follow this like annoying person on Instagram that you know is a huge Devils fan. Yeah. Like the type of fan to post a like you know their story. Devils won. I'm like wow. I didn't see them post for like two months. And yeah. Like, hey. Devils are bad, man. Bad. Really bad. It's a shame too because they were they were one of the Stanley Cup favorites going into this year after last year. But there's funny things about history repeating itself um, happening right now. So this is a little fact. Back in 2012 when the Devils made the Stanley Cup Finals, the year before that, they missed the f playoffs. The year before that, they inquired one of the best free agents in the, in the market, or they traded for one of the best um, players. It was a trade. Um, back then was Ilya Kovalchuk. They traded for him mid-season. Um, in 2009-10, they had they made the playoffs, got out in the first or second round. I forget. Year after that, they missed the playoffs. Year after that, they make the Stanley Cup final. So that's kind of similar to one of the players on the Devils. So they picked up Timo Meyer, who was like a really good player, two years ago, or last year, excuse me. And then um, they made the playoffs, won the first round, lost the second round. This year they miss. We'll see what happens next year. You know, history does repeat itself sometimes, but I'm just. That's just hopeful stuff I'm, going I'm just now. I'm going to be blunt. I don't know what you just <laughs> said, but you know what? Devils are winning it all next year. I don't care. History repeats itself. We're going That's what I'm Devils, saying. We're going to more Devils games This has year. happened in Devils' history before, like what we're seeing now. But I don't know. We'll see. Hockey Hockey's way better than the NBA because every team is decent. Every team has, like, good players. Any team can be any team any given day. Um, and any team can make the playoffs technically any given year. Maybe some teams not necessarily, but NBA you cannot say that. You just can't, dude. So I, right. I, I prefer – I mean, I've been an NHL fan for a while, but, yeah, it's just a, it's a good sport. Um, yeah, I always tell you the same things. I don't know anything about hockey, but I'm here for the $16 <laughs> beers and, uh, you know, yeah. me being able to – They're fun sporting games. Shit. They're fun games to go to as dude, well. I actually, I actually was, like, talking to my dad – and I was talking to him about the games that we went to last year. Yeah, last year was I crazy. I think I only went to one game this year. Yeah, last year we went to the game where they beat, they tied we the to, record. We went to like three or yeah, we went to a couple games, but, but the I Oilers just, game was. I good. always, I always remember the one day when we got like the really good seats, like right, right by like three or four rows. Oh yeah. Center ice. God, I wish I wrote down some of the things I was saying to that goalie, man. I don't even remember. But <laughs> the one that, like, sticks out to my mind was when I told him. Now, listen, this is after a lot of – this is after, like, what was it, like two or three yeah, tall boys? Two tall Something boys. like that. Yeah. I think I spent, like, 50 bucks on beer and I got, like, three. <laughs> but I remember telling the goalie, I was like, I bet you chew corn with your mouth open. Or, like, no, I bet – I told him that I bet he doesn't have to <laughs> open up his mouth to chew corn. I was telling him some stupid shit. <laughs> I really so, was. That's some funny shit, though. I told him – I'm pretty oh sure at one God. point I told him that his teeth are so fucked up that you could put a puck through that. I don't really <laughs> remember. <laughs> I just remember – I just remember we were boys – we were – not boys, but like we were we were talking to the people right next to me, and they or the right next to us, and they were like, "How do you think of this stuff?" I'm like, "I don't really know." Yeah, I don't know. That was I funny. Just kinda, I just kind of talk my shit. Yeah, I went to a game this year where uh, I got free tickets, and uh, I was like three rows behind the bench for the away team. Uh, you had to be talking, dude. Not only was I talking, everybody was talking because there was a really bad call. And then, like, the whole team gathered to the bench. And their captain, this was against um, the v Vegas Golden Knights, which is probably the most hated team in the NHL right now because they just, you know, they started their franchise, like, four or five years ago. They already have a Stanley Cup win. Like, it's bullshit, you know. And they could – they won last year. And, um, yeah, nobody likes Vegas, like, in the whole league because of that. Uh, so, yeah, their ca – I remember – bunch of people were hecking, heckling them behind the bench and then their captain was just like like going like this and everyone just was like what the like everyone oh, was freaking bro, out bro I, if i would have saw that i would have gone crack the fucking <laughs> knuckles <laughs> just started going dude it was funny man but those are those were fun that was a fun game because of the seats um but yeah i mean hockey's fun uh sporting events are fun to go to go to hope to go to a bunch this summer UFC maybe at Prudential Center. Um, 
Anything else you want to talk about? What I don't know, think? man. I think we covered everything. Yeah, I think it was a good pod. Um, again, sorry for not having a lot of uploads recently. Um, yeah, my, that's kind of more so on me. I didn't really have a car for like a minute there, but don't worry, we got a new whip now, and yeah, so we'll be you know, we'll we got content on the way. Don't we'll be don't talking about more. Don't you worry. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, uh, I guess stick around with us. Um, we'll be producing more stuff soon, and. Uh, as always, thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Um, and yeah, see you in the next video. So. Yeah.